You're gonna have to forgive my slightly windswept and dishevelled state today because I am fresh back from petting cows because Scotland. Hi guys, it's Leanne and I am here to date with my March TBR. I am so excited for March. Not only because it is going to be a bumper month of reading that I am just a motivated to, to just read the hell out of the whole thing, but also because I am going on holiday in March. That's right, I have five whole days of literally sitting by a pool, sitting on a beach and wandering around from little cafe to little cafe, drinking adult beverages and reading and I cannot remember the last time I was so excited for going away. I do, I need it, I need it, I need it, I need it now. I mean also plain and anxiousness and people and touching and but, but holiday. Any hazel, there are so many books on this TBR and I have definitely I've definitely gone towards the gloomier side of my bookshelves this month. There's a lot of true crime on this list. It was an accident. I didn't realise until I sat down with the stack. But here we are. March, stack it, it's gonna be great. So we've gone from that really cheery opening to what is possibly the most harrowing book that I have ever read. I've already started this one. It kind of carried over from the end of my February TBR and you guys, I have a thick skin. Like, I have a disturbingly thick skin. I can put up with a lot of stuff. I can deal with gore. I have a rude cat who's scratching in her scratch post. You done? This is The Rape of Nanking by Iris Chang. It is a non-fiction and I would personally say a true crime novel about what is essentially a hidden holocaust. In December 1937, the Japanese marched into the historical city of Nanking and over what I think was the course of a week, we still haven't got to the dates yet, over 300,000 Chinese people were executed, tortured, in hideous, hideous ways, raped for fun, some other stuff that I'm just not gonna, I usually am not shy about including details on this channel but there are some things in this book which I think could be extremely triggery for people so I'm gonna leave it there, horrific things were done and um, nobody cared. It was reported by the American media and some of the British media. There were camera crews there, there were pictures taken that were broadcast worldwide and it, it fizzled out, it just disappeared. Tangentially the reason that I picked this up was because I'll be picking up The Poppy War very soon and a portion of that, although it is a fantasy novel, a portion of what happens in that is based on the rape of Nanking and I decided if I was going to read and invest in fiction about it I should probably attempt to educate myself about the realities of what went on because I think that we as a society are quite good at burying our head in the sand about the things that we do that are horrible. So I am racing through this, I'm actually reading it and following along with the audiobook because there's a lot of dates and names and pronunciations and the audiobook narrator who I will put below because I can't remember her name is fabulous. It's so digestible and so easily readable so I'm, I'm recommending this before I've even finished it because it's great. It It's horrifying and morally wounding and disgusting but it's it's a great book. On a cheerier note, there are three other novels that I am carrying over from my February tea... Really? And the first one is Retribution Falls by Chris Wooding. This is the first book in the Tales of the Ketty J Quartet. Yeah, there's four of them. Yeah, yeah, there's four. I know stuff about the books on my shelf. Informed professional booktuber right here. 
This is a steampunk series about Darian Frey who is quite a famous smuggler in these here parts and his motley crew of airship pilots and engineers and navigators and things as they get themselves into a lot of trouble they begin the novel in a hostage situation in a lot of trouble I've read this one before and it's tons of fun it is absolutely hilarious i am so fond of the characters most of them are just wonderful darian Frey is pretty much exactly jack harkness from torchwood i mentioned that comparison to helen and she was just like yes that's perfect the reason that i've picked this one up this month is not just because i would like to reread more books in 2019 but also because this book is one of my lovely wife helen's favorite favorite books favorite favorite books ever 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 and unfortunately the other three were never produced on audiobook and they're not available anywhere so she hasn't been able to carry on with the series and she started this series i think in something like 2007 so it's quite a long time ago so i am finally i'm going to refresh myself on this one and then i'm going to read her the next three because i think she should be allowed to carry on with her favorite things and not be excluded from the fun and the drama and the idiocy that is Darian Frey. The next one that I'm carrying over again have already started. I've been a bit of a bad girl recently. I am reading my stack at TBRs in order I've discovered but because in February I kind of panicked about the lack of books that I had read so far this year I started like three or four books all one after the other and I, I was reading them all but that's not the point of stack it is it Leanne no the rules of stack it are that I make a stack in whatever order I want and I read from top to bottom without skipping any and if I skip any I have to unhaul them because I obviously don't want to read them and I did the opposite instead of putting off books I was so desperate to get to them that I was just like just give me all the books ah, I'll read everything and it doesn't work and that's why we have stack it so I need to stop doing that this month. I need to return to good habits and practices. Anyhow, this next book is Magic Bites by Ilona Andrews. So this one is the first novel in the Kate Daniels series. It is urban fantasy. Kate Daniels is a mm, down on her luck mercenary for hire who deals with magical problems. She lives in a world where when magic works, none of the technology works. So planes, trains, cars, phones the whole lot and when the magic is down and all of the technology works sometimes things have been summoned shall we say during the magical times and uh, that the, there's creepy things everywhere and nobody really knows how to deal with them so in this first one she gets herself into a sticky situation by investigating the death of someone who was quite close to her and we get a lot of backstory about where Kate came from. It's definitely not the best one in the series. Pretty much everybody who recommends this series says that they're like the first book is okay, the rest of the books are phenomenal so if you can kind of bear with the first one a little bit. I mean it's not a bad book, it's just it's not it's not Patricia Briggs guys, it's not Mercy Thompson, that's all I'm saying. But it is pretty good, I am enjoying it. And lastly, one that I haven't started but that I am definitely, definitely starting this month because I wanted to get to it in February but I ran out of time. February is a startlingly short month. I feel like once I got my groove on it just went poof and vanished. And that is Still House Lake by Rachel Kane. This is a thriller about a woman whose husband is in a pretty horrific car accident and she subsequently discovers I'm assuming through evidence found in this car accident that her husband is a serial killer and quite a prolific one. She and her child slash children, not sure, are then given new names and relocated to a new place and then in that new place a body turns up bobbing along on the surface of Stillhouse Lake and she realises that maybe, maybe, Huh, she's not actually as safe as she thought she was. 
Oh, this next one I'm so excited for. So I'm trying this year to make sure that I read my advanced copies as early as I can to tell you guys about them, to get you in the mood for them before they come out, but not so early that it's like, why are you telling me about this now? I can't read this book for six months because I don't know about you guys, but that annoys the crap out of me. I hate it when I see somebody reviewing a book that hasn't come out yet and I'm like, yes, and I go to pre-order it and I discover that I have to wait till like September and it's still January. So I'm not gonna do that to you. I'm only gonna tell you about books a month in advance. And one that I have been, oh, it's been so tempting sitting on my shelf. I have wanted it so badly is The Neighbour by Fiona Cummins. This is clearly not the finished cover. The finished cover looks like this. I think Pan Mac have really knocked it out of the park with thriller covers in the last little while. I love books about creepy neighbours. I love books about stalking. Horrible neighbours are actually my worst nightmare in the world. I am phobic about moving somewhere and getting a horrible neighbour. So far, we only have one. In our, in our whole experience of moving houses and stuff, we only have one crappy neighbour. Unfortunately, he is the next door neighbour on one side. But you know, he's old and there's a certain inevitability about that, shall we say. But anyway, I, I love, I love horrible neighbour stories, even though I absolutely never, ever, ever want to be living one myself and that is what the neighbour very much is. Garrick and Olivia and their two children move in to a beautiful idyllic family home in what looks like a gorgeous neighbourhood and really realistically you can never tell before you get your feet under the table, you know what I'm saying? And so they move in and they think everything's going to be fine and then all of a sudden there is a spate of local murders and they think that maybe actually moving here was a bad idea because serial killers suck and also they are starting to feel watched. They're starting to feel like people are keeping an eye on them all the time and oh lordy, do I know what that's like with my neighbour. The other proof that I am dying to get to, and I've, I've put it next on the list, and I usually wouldn't do two advanced copies back to back, but I just, I want to read it so very badly, is Critical Incidents. And one of the reasons is because I, this, look, they sent it with police tape, guys. I, this one is coming out in April from Fourth Estate, and it is about Robin Lyons. She used to be a cop but she was dismissed from the homicide unit for gross misconduct. She is now single whether she likes it or not and she is back living with her mum and dad as a middle-aged woman sharing bunk beds with her teenage daughter. So her life pretty much sucks and uh, then things happen on her doorstep, literally on her door, dead things happen on her doorstep and she realizes that you know maybe she was fired but maybe she's gonna have to do the investigating anyway because nobody else is. The next one that I've got is a bit of a backlist title from my TBR. I've had this one since it came out in paperback and I was really excited for it when it came out but for some reason it just kind of got away from me and I forgot it existed. I have since resurrected it and I am so excited. The reason it came to my attention actually is because the author is bringing out a new book this year and I'm trying to be really good and only purchase second books from authors where I have tried them so that we don't end up in a <coughs> Claire Macintosh situation. <coughs> Crap. <coughs> really must get that scene too. This is about three separate protagonists. That's four Leanne. Three separate protagonists who were all involved in an extremely twisted serial killer case. Firstly, we have a wife who did not know that her husband, a very well-respected man in her town, was a extremely prolific serial killer until the police came and found many bodies in the crawl space of her house. She 
is now ostracised from the community. People don't believe that she didn't have anything to do with it, that she didn't know and her life is in ruins. We then have the detective who was the one to crack the case and find all of those bodies but the case was really really difficult for him and he's now relegated to the basement working on cold cases pretty much where nobody has to see him or remember that he exists. And then the third and final character is the journalist who reported on the story who now can't get any work as a journalist anywhere. That's really intriguing me. She's like working in a department store or something and then a copycat murder shows up and all three of these characters think it's kind of a gift from God because there's a chance that all of them can redeem themselves albeit at the expense of somebody dying. Then the next one that I'm going to pick up is also true crime and that is The Girls Are Gone by and I'm just going to read the names because I've tried three times now and it's not happening. Michael Broadcorb and Alison Mann. So in 2013 two teenage girls out of a family of five disappeared without a trace. Their father was hysterical and to all appearances their mother was really not. The parents were in the middle of an extremely rocky divorce and the custody of the remaining children went to the father and the mother then went on vacation while her daughters were missing. Michael is a journalist who covered the case initially and is still involved in reporting on it but Alison is a paralegal at the firm which is actually representing the father in this case which suggests to me some conflicts of interest really. So I am going into this one with potential for bias blinkers on and also this one is really dense like let me see it's 335 pages but there's very little white space and the writing is tiny so I suspect this one's probably more like 450 pages if it was you know in a smaller paperback so <laughs> this one might take me a little while. I lied I said that those were the only proofs that I was going to tell you about but I have another one that's an upcoming release and I'm actually taking it on holiday with me. I was going to just share it in my holiday TBR but I'm so excited for it that I don't want to wait until the end of the month to tell you about it. So I'm just going to tell you right now. This is The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. It is about a girl who has lost, I'm not giving you any details as to why, but she has lost her current living situation and she desperately, urgently needs a new flat. She doesn't want to be moving in with anybody else like friends or family or anything. She wants to be independent but she has very little money. She has a very tight living situation and in London that that's a hard thing to do. But it turns out that Leon desperately needs a roommate for a very odd kind of flat share. See he works at night and so essentially the trade-off is Tiffy sleeps in the bed at night and Leon sleeps in the bed during the day and the two never meet. But they do end up leaving notes for each other and there are things around the place which kind of signal the type of person they are to the other person and uh, needless to say some romancing is, is involved. I'm so excited for this one, I'm just I'm so excited for it. it I think it's an interracial romance. It is um, a very modern type of romance and I just, I need it right now. I, I've, uh, I've put it aside to read on holiday because I think it's the perfect sort of absorbing airplane book but at the same time, <laughs> why do I do these things to myself? <laughs> so I've been joined by a Miss Kiwi who is very reluctantly saying, do you, do you hate me? You hate me. Okay, goodbye. I, I'm alone again. So as always, please let me know if you guys have read and loved any of the books on my TBR. Also, let me know if you have read and not liked them because that can sometimes be very helpful in limiting my expectations. And of course, if you have any recommendations for me based on anything that I've talked about here, then please do let me know because I am always in the market for a new find.
Bye! Can you stop? Please, can you stop knocking the stand? Could you, could you not do that to the tripod? Say hi. Hi, Marple. I am a troublemaker and I ruin all of Mummy's videos. Oh, I see. You do want to be held and petted, but only if Mummy makes you a baby. You guys wanted to see more of my animals. I guess you're seeing more of Marple. You're all very there, ain't ya? Mm hmm Where are you going? I don't think I like this. I think this will end badly for me.